I'm Dr. Sugar, your internet doctor, here to give you your dose of medical inspiration for the day. Thank you for joining us. Our topic is the common cold. So let's get started, shall we? If you ask 10 different people what to do to overcome a cold or flu, you're probably going to get 10 different answers. Grandma's going to say chicken soup. Mom is going to say get some rest and don't go out into the cold, especially if your hair is wet. And friends will say, go to the store, take some over-the-counter medication. In the old days, some doctors might have even said, take an antibiotic to prevent complications from setting in. And researchers are going to say, why don't you wash your hands and change your toothbrush? And the FDA says, only time is a sure cure. What we refer to as the common cold is an illness that is caused by a virus. Well, I say a virus, but to be more accurate, it can actually be caused by any one of over 200 different viruses, usually the rhinovirus, and they can all lead to a cold. These viruses cause over 1 billion colds, yeah, billion with a B, 1 billion colds in the United States every year. And most of the time when you get sick, it is likely that you have a cold because this is one of the most common illnesses around for both adults and kids. Children can get as many as three to eight colds every year throughout their childhood. And adults who are around children can catch these colds as well. So if you have kids or if you work with kids, you are likely to get more colds even into adulthood. Colds are the most common reason that children miss school and that parents miss work. It's true that viral infections that cause the cold and flu are often self-limiting, which means that they go away or die out on their own. But getting the cold or flu every month or every other month can lead to some 15 million days lost from work. And that may mean less income for that person's family since most of us have limited sick days at work. So how do you tell the difference between the cold and the flu? A cold usually starts slowly with a scratchy sore throat and then the next symptom is sneezing and sneezing and sneezing and then a runny nose follows that. Now sometimes you're going to experience a little coughing, headache, body muscle aches, decreased appetite or other symptoms, but for the common cold the most severe symptoms will be in the nose. Body temperature is usually normal or slightly elevated in a cold, but Infants and young kids can run a temperature up to 102 degrees even though it's just a cold. The flu signs are different. Flu symptoms occur suddenly and often there is a, a headache, cough, and chills that are more severe than what you would experience with a cold. You may feel severe muscle aches in your legs and in your muscles and a fever is usually much higher, sometimes as high as 104 degrees. That fever seems to dwindle away by the second or third day and the fever is soon replaced by a stuffy nose and a sore throat. The fatigue and weakness from the flu goes on for longer than a week and sometimes it's still there for a couple weeks. If you haven't already been if you haven't already done so, be sure to watch the entire series on influenza for much more in-depth information on the flu. So, getting back to the cold, the common cold. These signs and symptoms, they don't always mean it's a cold or the flu. These signs and symptoms are also common with measles, chicken pox, allergies, and strep throat. I'm Dr. Sugar. Be sure to watch part two of our series on the common cold. In the next section, I will go into a lot more details on how you catch a cold and how you can prevent it. So make sure to watch it, and I'll see you there. Sugar.